<laughs> we received some comments asking us to do a video specifically on suturing and how to suture up with deep laceration. So that's pretty much where you get cut and it's quite deep and you need to do multiple layers of sutures to close the wound. Uh, this video will be graphic, so if you're squeamish or not interested in suturing or how to repair something that got cut, don't watch this. Uh, I'm going to be doing suturing on a piece of a pig. Uh, because pig is actually very similar in consistency and texture to human. Uh, it's actually when you're in school you learn a lot of surgeries on a pig, like a dead pig, and then you then practice it on people after that because you get all the bugs out while it's on a pig and not a human. So the skin is very similar, all the tissues are very similar, so we're going to use that as this example. So. Mind you, it is a dead, not a live pig, so we're not harming anything, and uh, we're just going to show how to suture up a deep laceration. Now, one of the really important things to remember whenever you're doing suturing is that the body is made out of tubes. So, if you think of the most basic form of animal life, you have the worm. It's actually not the most basic, but we'll go with it. So, it's a notochord. You have uh, a tube, and it's got you know the mouth and the anus, and a pipe in the middle for the digestive tract. Uh, when you add on higher levels of life, uh, all you're doing is adding additional tubes around that tube. So, muscles live inside a tube, the skin is another tube, it's all a series of tubes. So you just want to think of what you're sewing up as different layers of this tube and you don't want to like incorporate one onto the other. When you're in there, you simply want to sew up the lower layers first and work your way up to the surface. So we'll go over how to do the suturing. For this procedure, you need a suture set, which is a needle holder and a pair of scissors. And then you're going to need resorbable sutures. So it'll be plain gut or chromic gut for the internal sutures or the deep sutures. And non-absorbable, such as these silk ones, for the external sutures. This is the skin, and you have a deep laceration. When we look at the tissue, you have the outside layer. This is the dermis and the epidermis. So you can see the epidermis is the brown layer on the outside, and then the dermis is this whiter layer on the inside, and then you have the first fascial plane down here. So you can see it's pretty much a series of different layers as you go down and for the sake of this let's make it a deeper wound. So now we're cut and it goes all the way down into the muscle. So we have to sew this up. For the deep sutures you want to use absorbable suturing material that way it won't need to be removed. Now it's very important that the sutures remain completely underneath the layers and have no exposure to the outside because if they are exposed to the outside, bacteria can run down the threads into the knot and you'll create what's known as a suture abscess. We're going to start with doing the suturing for the deep laceration. So what you want to do is you want to hold the needle in the needle holder and I like to personally hook the other end of the suture in my pinky, it just keeps it out of the way. The first thing you need to do is sew up the lower part. So the internal sutures, you're simply going to go through from bottom up, coming out, making sure that the needle exits below the epidermis and below the dermis. And then the tail is going to stay over on the side. You don't want to pull it all the way through because then you have to do it again. And you go directly across from it as deep as you can. So what you end up with is deep inside here you have the two tails which are going to tie your knot and then across the top you have the single piece. So this is going to bury the knot deep down in the tissue and that way it can be dissolved on its own without interfering with anything. So you pull it nice and tight, get the tissue to come together and then you're going to tie the knot. Now the knot is simple, this is called the instrument tie where you hold the instrument and you wrap it twice and then you're going to grab the end and then pull it off. So the simple way to think of it is you're going to go twice one way, once the other, again the first way, 
and then the last way. That's all it is. It's just wrapping it around this multiple times in opposite directions. The opposite direction is the important part. So you go twice and we're going to pull it so that the tail is a lot shorter. You want to make the tail as short as possible because that is lost material. So the needle is attached on one end and anything you have on the other end is lost and wasted. So you pull it nice and tight. And you do the first, second, and the third. And then this you're going to cut off as close as you can to the knot. Without actually cutting the knot off. And that's it. So then it stays nice and low down there. And then you can continue suturing the rest. So we're just going to do a couple of the deep ones and then we'll do the superficial. Same as before. You come in from the bottom and you're going to come up. And then over. And you want to get nice big bites. If you do it too little, the tissue will actually rip out. And then your sutures pull out. Now chromic gut lasts a lot longer. It lasts about 40 days. Uh, plain gut lasts about two weeks, about 14 days. So if you need the suture to hold for longer, you want to use uh, the chromic. If you only have plain gut on hand, it'll do. One thing, as you use the needle, you want to make sure that it doesn't start bending weirdly like this guy is. That means that I'm putting too much force too far back. So if you start seeing that happen in your needle, you want to grab it a little further forward that way you don't stress the hook so much. Because if you break your suture needle, that's it for the whole strand. There's no more suturing with that one. So we'll do a third one, and then we'll do the superficial sutures. So deep bite. Okay, so with that, you can see that the tissue deep is sewn up and tied together. So that's going to hold that. Now we need to close up the skin itself. So for closing up the outside, we're going to use non-resorbable. Now these, you don't need to have the knot inside, you actually want the knot outside. So when you were doing the absorbable sutures deep down, you started inside. That way the knot would end up deep inside the suture area. These you want to start on the outside because you want to make sure that the knot is far from it because the knot can actually get granulated into this area as it heals and then it's a mess to get out later. So same thing. Now when you're closing up the skin, ideally you want to make it nice and pretty that way it doesn't have a horrible scar. Uh, one way to do that is a horizontal mattress which is where you simply grab onto the outside. And then you come through on the other side. And then you go back the other way. Now, I'm not going to tie this one off because it's more for the aesthetic reasons. So this one's going to actually make the tissue pucker quite a bit, which will give you less of a scar. But it runs the issue that it can pinch off the blood flow to the area, and then the tissue doesn't heal it actually starts to slough off. So if it's like on someone's face this is a good idea because it'll make less of a scar but if you're talking about something that's quite quite critical like their leg don't worry about this one. So the idea of it is when you pull it and then go to tie the knot 
you can pull it and it pulls the skin together and it gets it close and it kind of puckers. So the problem is that this area here can get strangulated and won't get any blood flow. So that's why it's not the best one to do for that. So if you have a big wound that you just need to close it, you're not worried about the scarring, what you want to do is simple interrupted, which is the same as you did inside. So you'll simply do the middle of the wound first. Get closure there and then you can go closing the rest from that point. So you pull it together and then it's the same way to tie it. So you tie it off and you snip it short. Now the internal sutures, they were cut very close. These you'll cut and leave a bit of a tail on them. If you cut them too close, they tend to come untied. Deep sutures, you want them to go away, so that's not a big issue. The external ones, you want them to stay because the external ones are going to keep the wound from opening up on the outside. So the reason you're using absorbable inside is because no one's going in there to get them out. And then you don't want to have absorbable ones for the outside because you don't want it to come apart on its own. You want to control when that's going to happen. So as a general rule of thumb, the lower the number, the larger the scar is going to be. So for example, a 3-0 is going to leave some scarring, whereas a 5-0 would leave less scarring because the silk is actually just a lot thinner and a lot smaller, so it's not so bad. So we'll do the last one for this demonstration here. So the same, you just come in on one side, and then if you can get it to go all the way through on the same throw, excellent. So it's two, one in the opposite direction, one in the original direction, and one in the opposite direction. And that's the knot. That's it. So that's how you close a wound. And you, the things you want to have are no tension. If it's pinching really hard, the stitches are actually going to strangulate the area. It's not going to get any blood flow and it'll actually pull apart because the stitches will pull out. Uh, the big thing you want to do is keep the area nice and clean that way it doesn't get infected now uh, we also received questions about using super glue because super glue was actually developed back for world war one for the trench situation where the idea was if someone got wounded you could just put glue in there stick the tissue together and that would be it it was liquid sutures they worked really well because anyone with no medical training could just glue the guy back together the problem with super glue, which is cyanoacrylate, is say this gets infected and then you need to open it up because it's infected and they're going to die from infection. What you need to do is open it up again. Now with super glue, you're out of luck. With sutures, you can just clip them out of there. So let's imagine that this is now infected and we need to open it up and clean it out. You're going to open it on the outside, and then any deep sutures, you'll just be clipping those out as well. And you'll get it all out of there. Get everything cleaned up. No more stitches, but it's still infected. So you want to do something that's called a blunt dissection. So you'll take a blunt instrument, and you're actually going to go in there and open it up open the wound and then you're gonna run in the direction so say that the arm is running down this way you'll run in the length of the long limb because if you go that way you're less likely to come across a very important nerve or artery because they're all running in parallel with it so you just open it all up as best you can and you have a couple options you could a just leave it alone or b you could do something called marsupialization, which is where you actually sew the inside to the outside and sew it open. That way it drains and doesn't get infected, or the infection has a way to get out of there. So to do that, 
you'd want to use non-absorbable sutures so silk is a good option because it won't dissolve on you so it gives you a lot more options because it stays open or it stays in there until you remove it so what you do is quite simple you're just gonna sew it up again but instead of sewing one side to the other you're actually gonna sew the inside to the outside and this is going to pinch the tissue and keep it open so same setup and you'll see when you tighten this it's just gonna pinch it apart So same thing, you want to kind of pull back on it, that way it all holds open. And then you go through the fascia and out. And then when you tighten this, it's going to pull it back. And it would be the same on the other side as well. You simply get a good bite. You want to be quite far back, as far back as you can, and make sure that you grab the inner layer as well. That way they pull together. So when you have an abscess, there's actually going to be an inner wall to the abscess, to the infection. So that is the thing that you're going to sew to the skin. So what you're doing is you're sewing it open so that it can't close. And when it can't close, it can't accumulate the infection and the pus will continue to drain out and you can actually wash it and keep it clean that way the patient doesn't die from an abscess This is going to be quite short. Okay, so there you have it. You can see that it holds itself open and if there's any infection in there, it'll just drain out. So while it's like this, you actually want to scrub the wound and rinse it with saline to keep all the pus out of there and keep it clean. It's going to look really nasty. It's going to get a really big scar. It's going to actually heal from the bottom up. They call this secondary intent. So primary is where you get primary closure and the wound's closed and it just heals up on its own. Secondary is where the body actually has to grow a secondary layer of tissue in here, which is going to be a big scar. But the important thing is that it'll survive. So if you get an abscess and you super glued it, you have problems now because now you have to figure out how you're going to open the wound up with the super glue. With sutures, you can just cut the sutures out and then sew it open. So that's the big advantage of learning how to do suturing over just relying on super glue. While knowing how to do sutures is an important thing before you head out anywhere far where medical assistance might not be uh, close it doesn't replace actually going to the doctor. If you get cut or injured and you're near a place and they have a hospital and actual doctors, go see them. Don't just grab some thread from the sail locker area and you know grab your sail needle and think, I'll just sew myself up. It, don't do that. Go get actual medical treatment from an actual medical doctor who knows what they're doing. But if you're out in the middle of the ocean, there's no one around and something bad happens, this can at least patch you up to get you to shore so that you can get actual medical treatment.